One of my favorite gimmicky sneakers from my childhood is back, the Reebok Pump Omnizone 2. And uh, so today we're gonna basically dissect it to find out the truth of the, if this is actually a functional shoe or if it's just a cheap 90s gimmick. Uh, because you, as we've seen, you just can't trust these big brands, you can't trust sneakerhead hype, and you especially can't trust your own 90s nostalgia. For those of you who don't know about Reebok pump technology. It first debuted in 1989 and was inspired by inflatable air casts to offer support, protection, and a customized fit. This was achieved by, in Reebok's word, the pump technology featured inflatable chambers fitted within the shoe, which enabled the wearer to customize fit by either inflating or deflating the areas of the shoe around the ankle and full foot, giving stability and support. So basically there's just a hidden airbag inside of this shoe, which to me was absolutely mind blowing as a kid, just to think that you could actually fill up an airbag inside of your shoe to give you extra support. And they were the envy of all the kids on the playground. Anytime you were about to do something, some super sketchy trick, jumping off of a, the top of a playground, or if you were the last one alive in Sharks and Minnows, or if you had a big presentation in class you were afraid of, you just reach down, give that thing a few pumps, and your adolescent ego and your shoes would get a little boost in confidence and support. And the pump technology and name blew up significantly after D. Brown from the Boston Celtics wore them during the NBA dunk contest in 1991, where he pumped up his shoes before every single dunk. And some of the commercials from this era are some of my absolute favorite commercials ever. We'll put some over the top so you can check them out. That's why I plan to pump from Reebok. Pump up and air out. So now that you know a little bit of the history and what this pump technology actually is, let's start dissecting this thing. And we're gonna try to answer three questions with this video. The first one is how much real leather is actually in this shoe because these sometimes these shoes hide so much fake leather in them. The second thing is how much of an air bladder is actually in this shoe? Is it just the tongue? Does it wrap all the way around? Does it go underneath your foot? And the third question is how much hexalite is in the sole? Does it run the full length of the shoe? Kind of like some of these longer air units do in Nikes. Is it just the heel? That's what we're gonna find out. So first, starting with the leather, we've seen quite a few Nikes just sneak little fake pieces of leather in the construction, especially around the toe. So the first thing I did was start dissecting this toe, started popping a few of the stitches to really reveal if this is actually real leather. And I was curious if this top layer continued down to be a true double layer toe, because I'm, I'm curious in the original version if it was double layered. And if, if this video does well, I wanna get a vintage pair to cut them apart and to compare to see what sacrifices were or weren't made. But as you can see, as I popped these stitches and pulled this back, it was not double layered, but the toe is made of full leather, which is really good. Cause it's, it's, it's always crazy to me that they put fake leather there cause it wrinkles so much more and creases so much more. Next, I wanted to see if these side panels were actually leather and this this TPU midfoot cage was kind of in the way and I didn't know for sure if there was an air bladder throughout here so instead of cutting these off and accidentally puncturing through I just I thought it'd be a good excuse to kind of rip these off and see how easy or how hard it was to rip this apart so I gave it a yank and they're they're pretty easy to pull off which doesn't really matter but it was just fun to do and after we got that TPU cage removed or ripped off we can see that a lot of these panels are real leather. And it's interesting that all these different leather panels are backed by some kind of fabric. And usually they do this with a really cheap leather that doesn't have that classic grain pattern on top that gives leather its strength. They have to reinforce it with fabric because a suede that doesn't have that grain pattern is really easy to rip apart. It's a, it's a surprisingly fragile material. So I can't tell with my naked eye if, if this is just a suede leather with a plasticky coating on top to make it look like a higher quality leather that they had to back with fabric or if it was just backed with fabric to make it a little bit more a little bit stronger a little bit more reinforcement and after it was mostly dissected around the ankle I was pretty positive that there wasn't any kind of air bladder around the ankle which was kind of a bummer because I was really hoping this pump would fill up your tongue and the air around you and a little bit underneath your heel but it doesn't look like it's going that direction but we do know for sure that there is at least a, some sort of pump action going on in the tongue so then I started gently popping a couple stitches off the tongue. I got a little bit nervous because you could see that air bladder material sewn into the tongue. So I was a little bit nervous that I might pop that bag. And after I got that lining cut away and this air bladder removed, this thing is pretty cool looking. It kind of looks like a, a Nazca line and it does pump it up quite a bit. It's maybe in the most useless part of the shoe, pumping up the tongue because that's where you tie it and you can get the custom fit by tying your shoes. But 
it's cool either way. So then we ran the first test. So I wanted to know how many pumps it would take to actually burst the air bladder. So we got to work by just pumping this thing up. And I assumed by maybe 50, it would bust but we got all the way to 350 and it still was holding air and it got to the point where the actual pump was no longer pumping air into the bladder so brody just kept squeezing and compressing the bladder until it finally popped and it definitely pop plopped it definitely popped it's crazy how distended and how bloated this material get before it actually pops it grew to like three times the size and and so i was pleasantly surprised at how durable this thin material actually is and i so i'm guessing that most people that have issues with this shoe with not filling up and that pump action not working it's probably failing in either the release valve or the pump itself which both of those are really cool because if you look really closely at the pump it has this little teeny hole on the outside of the pump that's covered by the basketball so that when you push on it the basketball seals that little hole on the inside forcing the air through the pump and through this little diaphragm that looks like just a little teeny bubble. And that's what makes that little clicking noise when you pump it up. And the way that this little diaphragm works is when you force air into it, it pops that bubble out, which opens up these little teeny air holes along the outside perimeter of the diaphragm, allowing the air to go into the air bladder. And then as you release the pressure, that little diaphragm snaps back, resealing those little teeny holes and seals all that air and traps it inside of the air bladder. I think that is so cool. I didn't, I, did, I don't know what I expected, but it's such a delicate little mechanism that allows air to flow in there. And I think that's where most people are having issues with these not filling up because it is just such a delicate little mechanism. And as for the release valve here, it's even simpler because it's basically just an aluminum plug that's held in place and tensioned by a little teeny spring on the inside. So when you push it down, that valve opens up and allows air to escape through to the side of that plug. And then when you let go of the button, that spring snaps it back into place, resealing the bladder and keeping whatever remaining pressure in the bladder. So it's, it's another really delicate process and you can see how this could easily fail if that spring lost its tension, if you compressed it too many times or it was just a faulty tempering on the spring. Because if that's, if that's not perfectly sealed, any, any air you pump into that is just immediately gonna escape out and, it, and it's not gonna seal itself. It, it's really crazy how much engineering goes into this little teeny gimmick. And I'm really curious if this is how the vintage pumps worked as well. So, I, so hopefully this video does well because I really wanna compare the two. And the final piece of tech and the third question that we're trying to answer about the shoe that's not nearly as cool and much more disappointing is the Hexalite. Because Hexalite sounds really cool. I'll put some B-roll footage of me attempting to try to figure out where it is and how it's structured and dig down to the Hexalite. But according to Complex, Hexalite is a cushioning technology inspired by the honeycomb, which is one of the strongest yet lightest shapes in nature. The structure is covered by a durable layer of thermoplastic urethane, which helps the setup maintain its shape and performance capabilities. Sounds pretty cool and techy, right? And I was expecting to see a full footbed of Hexalite. And so I pulled out that lasting board and I didn't see anything in there. It was foam all the way through. So it's like, oh, maybe it's just in like the very bottom layer between that rubber outsole and the, the foam midsole. So we put it on the bandsaw to basically just fillet the outsole off exposing that Hexalite. But as I pulled that off and revealed the Hexalite, it was just this tiny like inch and a quarter square of Hexalite and it's super thin and way too small to be functional in any way. So unfortunately, there's really nothing functional about the Hexalite gimmick in this shoe, which is a bummer because like I said, I, I like a good gimmick, but I want the gimmick to be functional. I would have liked to have seen a bigger patch of Hexalite. Does it actually matter? Not really, because when it comes down to it, no one's buying these shoes for performance or functionality anyway. There's just something about it where I want to know that I'm wearing a piece of vintage technology, even if it is from the 90s, not just the appearance of a vintage technology. So overall, is this shoe a gimmick or is it functional? It ended up being a little bit of both. Is it enough to, to dissuade me from buying a pair of these? Not even close. I still love these things and, I, and we're just being nitpicky to be nitpicky because if a company says there's a certain technology in a shoe, even if it is a throwback, I want to know if it's actually in there or if it just looks like it's in there. So overall, I, I still love this shoe and I, it's just so ridiculous. It's so fun. And I think I'm going to get a pair because I will take any excuse 
to, to find a reason to, to pump these up to give me give myself a little bit of extra courage so let me know what you guys think and support this video by liking like, commenting comment. and the, the trifecta because I really want to get a vintage pair of these to compare them and see maybe they've always skimped out on the Hexalite and maybe the pump wrapped all the way around the ankle and into the heel like like some of the models said they did I want to know and the only way that we can afford to do these really fun videos is with you guys' support so thank you guys so much for watching and for everything you do and let me know what other 90s gimmicky shoe you want me to, to test and tear apart next because this one was fun so thank you guys see ya